Alright, welcome to a beautiful morning. Super flat, calm conditions on the sound. I mean, we've got absolutely perfect conditions today. It's uh, about 5.15. And we're going to try to go to a deep, a wreck. Try to get some sea bass, you know, do something different. Take advantage of the nice day. Try to try a far range spot. My pedal just got fixed. Looks like they're working. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll show a clip of how I fixed them later in case any of you guys uh, also have the same problem with the older version. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Pretty excited. All right, catch back in. I made it to where I thought the wreck is, but I can't find it. So I'm just gonna throw the camera down. See what happens. So attempt one was a failure. It was just pitch black after probably 25 feet, and we were putting it down at like 50 feet, so it was just black. I don't know. I don't think I know how to adjust the color change. I might have to buy a filter, I think, to brighten it. I don't know. Alright, we'll try again shallower. Fog, some fog rolling in. Pretty typical of this summer. Catch you later. Somehow, I think I hooked Porgy. This thing, this giant. Oh, thank you, though. It's a good boy. Bigger size than what I've been catching lately. Still not keeper, but I see an absolutely inhaled that good sign. I know you want to go back. I'll get you back. Just get a quick measurement to see how far away I am. Sixteen and a half. Alright, so here we go. First drop with the uh the camera in shallower water and boom if you saw there to the right there's a porgy with the black stripe really never knew how dark that black stripe is underwater and yeah the the water's pretty cloudy but you'll see we get some shots of some fish but this has been a there's another porgy it's just been a learning experience and uh you know, it gets a little better, but one of the hardest things is actually keeping the the camera stable. So here's another shot. It says another drift. You can tell already the the lighting is different, and we moved, but not maybe you know a couple couple hundred yards. It's like very very similar conditions. I think we're in about. 12 feet, 12 to 15 feet of water. And so here we have our first fluke investigating. 
And uh, it is quite amazing how they they really inspect your presentation before they strike, in most cases. You know, here I'm just dragging some squid strips, not really jigging it how, well, you know, I would like to, but it works. It gets their attention. It just, uh, you know, it takes a lot more, I think, for them to bite it when it's just floating along here. So here I slow it down because uh, focus in on the uh, right part of the screen here. You see this fish moving in right now? I'm not really sure what it is. It could be a blackfish or a sea bass, but uh, either way, it's, it's definitely not a porgy. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think that fish is. Drop a comment below. So here we are, we got a uh, spider crab, boom, he's checking out the action, and uh, yeah, you'll notice like all these little shells, these are actually shells on the bottom here, um, so a very interesting bottom, uh, there's a can, so yeah, that's a uh, Long Island sound for you, uh, but yeah, in general it's a pretty drab looking bottom not a whole lot of uh, bright colors So here's just another common thing that could happen to your bait too is you know a piece of uh, seaweed gets on it and messes it up and you don't even know. Uh, here we got a couple porgies coming in. Yeah, here they are. You know, there's a lot of porgies in this area and uh, they're definitely schooling. Usually when you see one or two you see a couple more. And as interested as these porgies are, only one or two ever even touch the bait. Most of them always just looked at it from a distance. And probably there's a lot more that we can't see because of the clarity. But yeah, I was a little surprised as to just how timid the porgies are at, you know, attacking this bait. I thought they would be nibbling it a lot more. But I don't know, maybe if I use clam, they would. So... A lot of uh, a lot of room for different experiments.
So now with this next clip, you'll notice I started trying to fish with my other rod. Uh, this little grub, you know, jigging this while I'm filming to see what it looked like underwater. But, you know, here it's already kind of tangled up and it's just so hard to fish with two rods. You know, one trying to keep it stable and the other one jigging it up and down. But uh, the porkies are definitely interested in in the grub that I'm jigging, but you know they're just kind of nibbling at it. And then, and here's this. Uh, it looks like a skull coral. I thought it was cool. So here I'm jigging again, and I think by doing so I may have, you know, attracted a fluke because here we go. The fluke is closing in on that back bucktail if you look closely, and he actually just put it in his, had it in his mouth. There, there he goes again with it. But, uh, you know, I probably instantly felt the, the hook, so he slowly goes out of the screen. But then there's another one here to the left, bottom left. You're going to start seeing him coming up right there. Boom. Checking out the top. Um, he gives it a good look for a while. But he's just not, not that interested. Takes one little bite, a little swipe, and then that's it. He's Oh, well, he makes one little turnaround. But, uh, no, nah, he's not having it. So it really just shows you how your presentation needs to be good for a fluke. You can't just, you know, maybe get lucky and put everything down there if they're really biting. But I think all in all, what your bait looks like matters quite a bit. Alright, in this uh, last clip, I just put the camera down with no hooks to a spot where I know there's usually a lot of porgies, and sure enough, there were a lot of porgies. And uh, so this spot, too, is I think about the max depth range I can get, because um, this is about 25, 28 feet. So I think beyond 30 feet with this kind of water clarity is when, you know, it just doesn't quite work. Alright, so that's a wrap. Got three poor geese keepers and then let one go. One short fluke. And, uh, and that's it. But we did a lot of underwater videos.